Yes, thank you. This is Jackie McKenzie, who is a human rights lawyer and lecturer, and I'm sure she'll say a bit more about herself and her long-standing uh, involvement in human rights and other activities, especially in Grenada. Okay. Hi. Um, good evening or good afternoon, depending on where you are. Um, as Jean said, I'm Jacqueline McKenzie and um, I work in the UK as a lawyer and run a Centre for Migration Advice and Research. Um, recently, my work has been a lot around the Windrush scandal, so most people may have heard of that. Um, and also uh, around what we call a uh, conducive deport and also legislative reform. Uh, we're trying to get uh, major items of uh, nationality law changed um, on the basis that they're discriminatory. In terms of Grenada, um, I lived in Grenada for six years uh, from the ages of 13 to 19, so I went to secondary school there. And I was there when the revolution happened uh, on March 13th, 1979. Uh, I had left before, um, the, before, I left in 1981, so before what we describe as the fall of the revolution and the, 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 the killings and the whole purpose or the reasons why we're here today. Somebody is commenting that there's a lot of background noise, and I'm getting it as well. Yes. It's very distracting. Okay. So. Thank you. Yeah. Um, could I interrupt you just for a moment? Please, could I ask everybody to mute themselves except the speaker? Um, that's causing a lot of uh, background noise. Could you all mute yourselves? It might be something on the line then because it's still there, but never mind. Let's see how we get on. Yeah, so, um, yes, so today, October 25th, is obviously the very sad anniversary uh, for those who are children of the revolution. You know, I consider myself to be one of those. And, um, you know, it's a time when there's a lot of uh, reflection, uh, but also discussion and criticism um, and an attempt to try to understand how could something like October 19th have happened and then how did October 25th happen and it's difficult to have this discussion irrespective of what we might think ourselves without looking at, as to who is responsible for this who do we attribute um, responsibility I don't think that sufficient of that work has been done and, and, and it is something that needs to be done now today is about launching a campaign to uh, recover the remains of the uh, people who died, Morris Bishop, uh, Jackie Kress, and others. And that's a, an extremely laudable campaign for many reasons. Um, firstly, for the families and loved ones of the people who did died. You know, I mean, I, I have a very good friend whose father died on that day. And, you know, they, they can't still come to terms. I mean, you never really come to terms with the loss of a loved one but they can't come to terms with having lost a loved one in such draconian and tragic circumstances and not even knowing what happened to the bodies of those loved ones other than in a sort of, you know, a colloquial way. There's lots of discussion about what might have happened and dreadful things were said, but nobody really knows. I mean, that's the truth of the situation, I think, anyway. Um, and in terms of the nation also, because when you look at, I mean, just this weekend, looking at social media, um, the sorts of discussions that have been had around um, what happened in Grenada in October 83, it is still a very polarizing issue. And although people talk about the rise and fall of the invasion, the discussion always ends up in, and what happened to the bodies, and why hasn't the respect that's normally given to people who get killed in these sorts of circumstances. Why hasn't this happened? Um, and thirdly, because whereas we can't say, you know, that what happened between the 19th and the 24th of, uh, of October was a war, um, there was certainly a conflict and it, and it had as its characteristic, the, the, uh, an armed conflict, so to speak. I mean, people were shot with guns, people died. Um, certainly what happened from the 25th onwards for the next week or so 
was definitely an armed conflict, an invasion of a sovereign country. And what, what hasn't happened anywhere in that, and what should always happen, is the respect and the deference to be given to the war dead. And, you know, I mean, we saw how the Americans reacted in 1993 when some of their soldiers were dragged through the streets of Mogadishu in Somalia. Um, you know, we were almost on the brink of World War III. That's how much importance are given to war dead. And I would say that Bishop and the others are our war dead um and and just there's absolutely no discussion there's all sorts of you know d debate about well did the bodies get taken to a camp in calavini were they burnt were things cut off the bodies and kept as momentums did the americans take them but there's no real concerted effort to really find out and these things are governed by you know international treaties and international law um you know there are four protocols in the geneva convention and I think what we really ought to be doing now, one, so that the families themselves can get closure, so that Grenada can start to heal, and so that we can offer the deference and the respect to our former leaders and of people who died on that day. In the same way, I mean, we're now in the throes of Remembrance Month, or we're coming up to Remembrance Month in the UK, where people are buying poppies and, you, you know, there's all sorts of programming. And, and, and we are not able to do that. And if we're not able to do that, I think it is a major cog in our development. We can't move on until we're able to do this. And I looked at some of the celebrations, or, or commemorations rather, um, of, of, you know, of, of the death of, of Bishop and, and Jackie Kraft and uh, Brad Bullen and others. Um, and, and it was really pathetic. And I've been myself, you know, to the fort. Um, I've taken my children to the fort. And, you, you know, it's a really dim, gringy place. I mean, obviously, it's a haunted place because of what happened. But we are not able to respect our former leaders and show them the sort of deference that other nations would do with, with, with their former leaders and their war dead. And I think it's time to do that. I looked at the ceremony that took place on the uh, 19th. You know, there were hardly any Grenadians there. It's great that the Cubans come out and want to remember Morris Bishop. But, but where are the Grenadians in, in, in that ceremony? The fact that no government, and I know most of our governments have been really uh, quite backward, quite right-wing, quite pro-American, but none of them have really seen it fit to put some sort of proper memorial uh, to Bishop and others, or to even memorialise the fort properly, or to have some proper um, consideration of this part of our history in the National Museum and entering into the national curriculum. There's absolutely nothing being done whatsoever. I know that our own and comrades, and I, uh, I say our own because I am very partisan in this, have put up a memorial in the uh, cemetery in St. George's Town uh, to soldiers who died, and that is a wonderful sight. But for the national healing and for the national development, we've got to go further than that. And so I, I really do applaud um, this organisation, Grenada for whatever, for wanting to launch this campaign. I'm hoping it means that the matter of looking into uh, where, what happened and where are the remains, and there are two groups of people who need to be involved in this discourse and tell us what happened. There are the people who were the leaders of the revolution who survived, um, whether we call them the Grenada 17 or whether there's another group somewhere else, they need to be involved in this discussion, they need to be open and transparent. But the Grenada government and NGOs need to make representation, whether it's using international treaties. There are agreements, there are binding agreements. Grenada is a signatory to many treaties that governs this area of law. And I don't think anybody so far has actually said to the Americans, look, um, you know, what has happened? Because, you know, even if the Americans, and I believe that the Americans took the bodies because of the main reason of not wanting to have this shrine and this memorial um, that, that we talk about that is so important in terms of the national healing, the national development. But even if they, you know, we, we, we ought to be saying to them, you had custody of our soil very shortly after those deaths. And so it is almost certain to be the case that you would have found out where the bodies were or the remains were, and you would have done something with them. And I think that unless um, we have 
honest government and open government that's prepared to use their bilateral means or their diplomatic channels and go to the Americans and deal with this, it's going to be very difficult. I think the organizations like yours, um, you know, the hosts of this, this meeting and other NGOs and other organizations that I know are very interested in this. I know there's an academic that's very interested in this, ought to look at whether there are any applications that can be made using the Geneva Convention. But I, I, I think that something now needs to be done. And we were talking about 1983, we're coming up to 40 years in three years time, and we still don't have the answers. And I don't see enough effort being made to find those answers. So I want to really congratulate Grenada for whatever uh, for launching this campaign tonight. I wish every success. I very much want to support it and do any work that I can with it. Um, and, and, and yeah, and uh, uh, yeah, congratulations.